Hello, everybody. I'm so happy to be here and be a part of this TEDx with ICT. Um, cannot tell you it was a dream to do a TEDx and share my story and inspire people. So I'm just, just happy to be here. Thank you so much. So we are often stuck between black and white, which is, of course, the gray, and the crossroad where we always have to make a life-changing decision, be it personal, career, or social. When you're in that space, it is very difficult to actually figure out whether or how everything is going to pan out. And we're always in that area where, should I do this or should I do that? This is wrong, this is right. But, and we'll always have questions like, which major should I take in the college? Should I leave a relationship? Should I be in a relationship? Which job offer should I take? Or it could be, should I put my savings in a dream project? I mean, when we are in, especially at this age, there's a lot of questions and there are a lot of things that we have to figure out. And this can be very, very overwhelming. But sometimes, and you also feel sometimes that no matter what decision I take, there is no winning. So. According to me, there is no right or wrong. You have to believe in yourself and you have to say that if I take this decision, is it going to make me happy? And if it is going to make you happy, it is your decision to take um, and you have to take that plunge. But you have to take that decision with conviction and not be fickle. Since childhood, I was always in that gray area because I was very over ambitious. But I, and I came from a very poor Gujarati family. So you can imagine I'm talking about 30, 40 years back. So it was a little difficult where I wanted to be, I wanted everything. I, wanted, I was very over ambitious and whether you take it education or sports, I wanted to excel. My parents were very supportive, um, but I still wanted more. So, you know, and my, my father is a self-made man and my mother is a housewife but a very strong woman who pushed me and took me to all the classes which were after the school activity, which I'm very thankful to them. But of course, we were poor, there were very less means and I could understand that. When we are young, our parents take most of our decisions. And, you know, we don't have much of a choice whether you want to play a sport or whether you want to excel in something else. But they pretty much make most of our choices. And, you know, I always, my dream while growing up wanted to be, was a world famous athlete. And my mother's dream was to make me a classical dancer and an actress. So, of course, they're just two things completely apart. But don't get me wrong, I pursued that very happily and did my degree in Bharatanatyam and Kathak at the age of 18. But I also found a way to play sports after school so I could make her happy and I could fulfill my dream at that point. It was a very difficult time because on the weekends and the vacation I would fulfill their dreams and on weekdays I would fulfill my dreams. Well, that time there was no work and there was no, you know, thing of earning money, so it was fine. But later on, around 18, I had to give up my dream of being an athlete because one, there were no means and a Gujarati girl at that time choosing sports as a career was not even in the cards. So it was okay, but I pursued it till, and I knew one day that my time will come in some form or the other because I believed in my passions and my dreams. And then at 21, I started making my own path by understanding first that I needed to make money to fulfill my dreams, find people and mentors to support my dream. And then I just started working towards that. I achieved everything very late in my life. I did my shoe designing degree after I got married. I became India's first polo woman at the age of 40 and I became a DJ in my late 40s. So everything came very late. But today I'm going to talk to you about a formula or 
things that you can think when you are in the gray area or when you are confused or when you have to choose between right or wrong things that helped me since childhood to now which i have compiled just to tell you how you can use these to make your path a little easier there are five to six things that i want to talk to you about of course one my major my first thing is passion second is growth third is failure fourth is opinion fifth is mentor and sixth is core and values and gut so let's start with passion let me tell you passion is just not a hobby or something that you are fond of doing passion is something that you think about day and night something that you feel in your blood and veins so i will tell you when i decided to play polo at the age of 38 it was not something that i could just say overnight i'm going to become a polo player i had to be very sure that how much do i love that sport how much am i passionate about it because of course 38 starting a new sport it is a very difficult thing that you can't take it overnight so what i did is for the first 3 months i only rode horses i learned how to ride horses really well and i can't tell you that Three months, morning six o'clock, I would ride three horses, and evening six o'clock, I would ride three horses. I did that for three months, and nothing else, not not even picked up the stick. In that three months, I had a fall, and in during that fall, uh, that week where I was in bed, I was like, oh, oh, I mean, should I do this? Should I not do this? Should I take it up? And in that week, I missed. being on the horse so much i loved it so much that i was even willing to break my bones and that's when i knew that i was really passionate about it so that's when i took the plunge and but again that was a very big crossroad because it's a very expensive sport and again people were mocking me and you know saying things that you're too old to play a sport like that and you are not from the background of horse riding so i took some of my savings and i found the best polo school in argentina and us i took literally my savings i didn't care what it was going to be because there were no polo schools in india and nobody believed me in that time and nobody was willing to help me so i went to argentina and usa to learn polo and that's what i think passion is is that you are willing to do anything and everything to fulfill that desire to do something and no women at that point were playing polo in india so i knew it was going to be much much harder for anybody to believe that i was going to do it and but i was so passionate that i felt like okay this is my calling and i at least have to give it a shot before i quit my point is that no matter what you have to give it your best and in 5 years i was known as india's first polo woman you have to work very hard and sacrifice a lot allow your passion to be your purpose and one day it's going to be your profession something that you love doing every single day of your life growth we all like to take an easier path because that is more comfortable you know that's just human nature but when we take the harder path we learn more we grow more ask yourself when you're taking when you're choosing something that is this making me grow as a better person as a better individual also another thing when you're in the crossroad you need to think are you in a negative space or a positive space and when i say negative are you doing this to simply make a point or are you doing doing this to spike somebody or are you doing this to challenge somebody because when you do that you go into a darker space and sometimes leads to alcohol and drug abuse and also puts you into a very da- darker negative space so when i i tell you when i got divorced and i was young but i was also growing my show company and when i got divorced i was sad i was angry i was just in that negative space and my company was doing so well and i had an opportunity to go to new york to expand my business 
but I did not take that. I knew that I was in the negative space and I had to wait it, let that opportunity go, heal myself, be with my family, be with people who care about me. And I got better, I got in the positive space and then I went to New York and I totally rocked it and grew my company to another level. My point is that positive thinking at any point of your life or during that decision is very, very important. I will also tell you another example that how you have to visualize the best possible outcome. It might be that you might be having negative thoughts that, oh, what, are people, what if I grow, if I do this, if I don't do this. But visualize, when you're taking that step, visualize the best possible outcome. I'll tell you another story. I, um, while it was my first professional polo game, first, I was very excited and two minutes just before the game was ending, I had the worst fall of my life. Just two minutes. And everybody thought I almost died. After two minutes, I don't know what happened. I got back on the horse and there were two minutes remaining of the game. I told the team, no matter what, we have to win this. And I was willing to even die on the field. But I said, and I visualized, in that two minutes, I only visualized that I am going to win this no matter what. And we did win it. But my point was that in any time of your life or any decision you're making, you have to first think positive and you have to think of the best outcome whether it happens or not. That will lead to a greater energy and a better energy. Failure. Your life doesn't change by chance, it changes by change. Failure is the key to success. I guess we've all read it somewhere or the other. But when you make mistakes, you learn something out of it. So don't be afraid of failing or being wrong sometimes. It's okay. I'll tell you, five years ago, I wanted to open my own restaurant. And I moved to Gurgaon, rented an apartment, and completely with my bag and baggages, I said, I'll work from there, I'll monitor things. And I was putting a lot of chunk of my savings to open this restaurant. I had just come back from Napa Valley doing my wine studies. So I was very excited. I was like, oh, this is my calling and this, I'm going to fulfill my dream. 75% of the restaurant was complete. And these two guys who are my partners from Delhi cheated, took my money away and the project was shut. Everybody before I left Bombay told me, including my family and my friends, don't do it, don't trust these people, this is nonsense, you're not from the hospitality background. But I was not willing to listen because it, I felt it was my inner voice and I was going to give it a shot. Now what happened in that time is that I had rented the apartment and I had three months of the rent remaining. I didn't know how to go back because yes, there was a little fear that what is everybody going to say, that everybody is going to say, I told you so and you know, we, we warned you. So I waited there for three months and said, I'll just chill here and figure out how to face this or figure out a way how to tell them. In that three months where I was living, there was a piano and a drum room. I had so much time to kill because I didn't have friends there. So I just decided to enroll myself in the drum class to pass some of my time. I liked it so much that for the next three months, I did it day and night. I was like, whatever, something to keep myself occupied and not go into the negative space. In three, after three months, I, got a, I did my first gig in Delhi's prestigious club. And then I was okay to go back, taking something back or something like that. My point here is that every failure also has a silver lining if you're positive. Find something, don't, just because you fail, you don't have to go under. There is always something that you can do to feel better about yourself. Uh, when I said, I never thought that at that point I would go to Gurgaon and start becoming a drummer. But my point is you can always learn something, do something so that you never go into that negative space. So growth is very important. And failure, you can't avoid. So take it in your stride, but there you will see a silver lining in that failure too. I'll tell you a very good saying which has always stayed with me. How a man plays a, plays a game shows some character of it. But how a man loses it shows all of it. You have to be a good failure too. You cannot always say I'm going to win because nobody wins all the time. 
I, you know, and I'll tell you, after six years, even in that failure, I believe that one day my time will come. After six years, I got another opportunity, and I've just opened my own restaurant in Goa called Totem Goa. So you have to just first believe it. Even if you fail a few times, it's okay, but don't give up on the final goal of your life. Opinion. A very, very important, uh, you know, chapter where I would say that we live in a social world where everybody's opinion and people tell you hundred things and everything is in that zone. But it's never too late to learn or change in your life, no matter what people say. We've all been guilty sometime or the other by letting somebody else, you know, cloud our decision. We need to ask ourselves, when you choose that path, that are we true to ourselves? Are we going to be happy making that choice? And that is only your happiness, not like, is my mom happy, is my father happy, is this one happy? No. Are you truly happy making this choice and are you intentionally not hurting anybody? If yes, then that decision is yours to make. You know, people often crush other people's dream just because they can't live theirs and don't have the daring to fulfill their dreams. When I started my career in design, in the shoe design, my own family used to call me Mochi and Cobbler. When I started playing polo at 39, even the children were making fun of me. When I got on the horse for the first time, they were like, why, auntie, what are you doing? I mean, there was always things, because especially when I did everything late in my life, it was like, why is she trying to do or why? But sometimes your opportunity comes later. So for me, it was, and the biggest thing, I'll tell you, and I will also tell you this example about my relationship at 40. I was in a relationship which was just maybe my biggest, you know, I say it a mistake because I chose wrongly, but I take the full responsibility of it. And in six months, I decided to walk out of the relationship when everybody said, oh, no, 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 at this age, where will you find somebody or give it more time? I knew that I was being tortured. I knew that man was not right for me. So for me, it was just important that I'm not going to give one more day of my life to somebody who is going to put me down. I believe that we are granted one life. And as long as you don't intentionally hurt somebody, you have all the right to do what you want to do. Mentor. When you're in that gray area, you need somebody to you know, motivate you, to lift you up, to understand you. Be around people who understand how what you're going through. It could be one person, it could be a friend, it could be a family member, or even an acquaintance or a stranger. Because not necessary that every time we get people who are around us will support you. At 21, when I decided to be a shoe designer, my ex-husband, was the one who helped me to make this dream come true. Nobody, even my family, did not support me. When I started polo, I had only strangers come to support me. Somebody in Argentina, somebody in USA, somebody wherever I was going, there was just one person. I didn't have anybody in the field coming to even see my game because nobody believed me. But that one person or two people, strangers, were enough to say, Rina, you can do it. We are here to cheer you. My driver was one of my biggest mentors. But, and when I even started my restaurant, which was just two years back, my family did not come because they were like, again, you're doing the same blunder. You've already lost your money before. A, a friend who was not really a friend, a manager, who came and stood by me from day one to every brick to everything, he supported me. You know, my biggest mentors are Oprah and Michael Jordan, who I have never met. So look around you, you will find that one person who doesn't have to be very close to you, but who will just believe in you, and that one person could be enough. It could be even a stranger. For me, keep, you know, for me it's very important that you have to keep your eyes open and feel everything around you, feel that energy of somebody else. You don't have to always latch on somebody just because they are your family and have the validation. You can go out and do certain things as long as somebody believes in you. So have those kind of people. Don't be around weak people who crush your dreams and demotivate you. Then gut and core values. Your ambition and your goal should matter more than money. 
It's a very, very profound statement because we are all right now in that rat race where, but your goal and ambition should matter in the beginning more than money. Of course, everybody wants to make money and everybody has to pay their bills. But when you start, your passion, your goal has to be much more than, oh, I want to make this money because that's why I'm doing this. Remember, ambition can either break you or make you. Always listen to your gut. Not your head, not your mind, but that inner voice. That inner voice that always speaks the truth and that's called your instinct. It will come from here. It will not come from here or here, but it will literally come from here. But you have to be aware of it. You have to listen to it because most of the time we are only doing this and the heart. So try and get more aware of your gut because your gut will always tell you the right thing. When I started my restaurant Totem, which was just two years back, I cannot tell you, it's like literally I had nobody come there to support. My family came after one year after it started. And I knew my instinct, I was like, this is my second chance, it's my calling and I am going to make it. I'm going to give my 100, 200%. I'm going to work day and a night. If I fail after that, I've learned something out of it. I'm sure I'm going to learn in one year of experience and I didn't have hospitality background. But it was my wish since so many years and because I had failed, I felt I got, and that was my instinct. It was like, no, Rina, you have to do it and this is your chance. And it did extremely well and you know, I'm so happy that I listen to my instinct, not anybody else. My point here means truly don't quit unless you have tried 200%. Work and also put hard work because without hard work and you have to sacrifice a lot. I have sacrificed my friends time, I've sacrificed my working hours, I have sacrificed my family time because till you don't give hard work and time to something that you love, it can never grow. You are always going to be in a position where you'll have to, you'll feel confused. You'll be like, should I do this? Is this right? Is this wrong? But I can only tell you one thing is that Nothing in life is certain. So today is your day. Today be believe in your dreams. Today make it happen. If you get an opportunity, don't let it go. Because at least you gave it your best shot when you had that opportunity, when the time came. But you have to work hard, sacrifice a lot. And one thing you have to remember is please lift others on your way up. Thank you.